Cargo trading is one of the staple game loops in Star Citizen, and with updates expected from patch 318, it seemed only appropriate to record what the gameplay looks like in the current patch, not least for the sake of posterity. I'm Farrister, and in this video I give you a mostly real-time talk through a cargo hauling run from loading up the goods to dropping them off for that sweet profit. I say mostly real-time as I've slightly accelerated some parts to keep the length of the video down a little, I've assumed most of you don't really want to watch the train journey in real time. Sorry if you did. And if this is your first time on this YouTube channel, then welcome! Here you'll find plenty of Star Citizen videos ranging from guides to reviews, so you might like to check out a few more, or even subscribe to be notified when new videos go live. And for the channel regulars, please let me know in the comments if this kind of playthrough video hits the mark for you. So the eagle-eyed will notice that we're starting our trade route at the moon of Ariel, surrounding Hurston. Ariel is a popular location for many a trade route owing to two outposts that spawned the highly profitable Laranite. Choosing what trade route to run is part of the challenge of running cargo in Star Citizen, however there are some common routes, and you can usually find a good route by either checking your Moby Glass, looking on the journal for commodity prices and looking for highs and lows, or alternatively many players will use an external website like UEX Corp to determine their route. The larger landing pads at places like this have more than enough room, even for larger craft like the Hercules. And we'll start this route at Hurston Dynamics Bez Deck. I've sped up the way in as the Hercules isn't the fastest of ships in atmosphere. One of the challenges of landing the Hercules is trying to avoid scraping the nose when you head down onto the planet's surface. Almost managed it on this landing. I take that back, we didn't. One of the useful tips that I can give around hauling cargo, some ships are more affected by others, is as you're preparing to leave the ship, switching the external engines off. This means that if there's anything that causes your ship to jump or to jolt, it won't stay in place, gravity will do its job and your ship will stay within arm's reach. As we make our way through the Hall of Doors, through the Hercules, we'll leave the ship via the elevator. It's one of the most secure ways of getting in and out of the Hercules, since people can't potentially be running in or out of the ship when you're not watching. Nice to see the expansive cargo bay of the Hercules filled up as we load up on cargo. With any of the outpost locations like this, you'll want to immediately head for the storage building. They're usually marked with storage, and you'll pretty quickly get a good feel for what they are if you run the same routes regularly. It's very common, especially if other players are also running cargo, that you won't be able to completely fill up your goods at one location. In this case, there is some alternative options. You could either load up on something like Titanium, or alternatively, there is another spawn point on this moon that we're going to head to first, just to see if we can get any more of that profitable Laranite. I 
enjoying the profile of that Hercules Starlifter. This is interestingly the Hercules M2, has a very large cargo bay, although the C2 does have even more storage available. I've talked in another video about why I chose the M2 over the C2, and however that's more for future state rather than the in-game at the moment. As you're probably gathering by now, trading isn't the most active gameplay loop. There's lots of downtime, lots of moving around. Uh, that might be good for some people, or it might not be for others. We'll switch the engines on and take off. In this instance, because I know I'm just going to be travelling to another location on this moon, I just need to get enough altitude to activate the quantum drive. Even though the altimeter isn't working, I know I've got enough altitude because the little quantum marker turns blue instead of red. And then after calibrating, we'll make the hop around the moon to our next trading destination. And Hurston Dynamics Lathan comes into view. Once again, for the sake of avoiding you watching a very slow flight in, I'll speed up the footage as we approach. And then this time I'll do my best to avoid the messy landing that you saw at the last outpost. One of the tips for the Hercules seems to be if you go into a dead stop and then simply strafe downwards, the nose is less likely to drop. However, I find that's often easier said than done, so actually pitching up the nose a little bit as you're landing seems to help. And there we are, didn't scrape the nose, so engines off again, and we'll go and load up our next lot of cargo. For cargo type gameplay, I would say it's definitely worth keeping an eye out for other players. If I see another player, I will simply leave. It's not worth the risk of losing potentially a significant amount of Alpha UEC that is caught up in your cargo deck. That may become especially true under patch 318, depending on how the new physicalized cargo works. So as before, I'm going to search for the storage building, which is not that one because that's the first storing or reclaiming small ships. But that over there looks like it might be a good choice. Incidentally, I do like these locations in the verse that have got the landing pads. It just feels like a more formal way of landing your ship. So we'll see how much Laronite we can get from this location. 31 SU, so that won't fill up the Hercules, um, but I'm keen to get back and start selling, so I'm going to load up the rest on Titanium. So we have a full cargo bay, we'll take this across to Lawville and sell it.
do really like the profile of the Hercules. It feels like a, a nice looking cargo ship. Now often the uh, lift on the Hercules does retract after a little bit of time, so if you've accidentally left it out, don't worry, but equally if you're quick with your run you can get back on time to still use it to head back up into the ship. One of the other satisfying things about hopping up the lift in the Hercules is you get a nice view of all of that cargo sat in the cargo bay as you come up. When we get out at Lawville, I'll, um, I'll have a peruse of all of those lovely crates. So we'll get the engines on and start leaving the atmosphere. We're going to be heading to Hurston and then heading to Lawville. depending on the length of the run that you're doing for your own trade route and whether it's within the same planetary system or whether actually it's potentially crossing the whole of the Stanton system it can be very helpful to have some sort of distraction entertainment on in the background whether that would be a bit of TV or Netflix or maybe even some YouTube videos in the background So as we make the hop across to Lawville, it's worth adding the reason why you might be so keen to avoid other players when you're hauling cargo like this is that the cargo in the back of the ship at the moment, although it should net us a nice profit when we land, the cargo cost us 780,000 Alpha UEC. So that's what's at risk if there anything happens to the ship. Which is why I'm quite conservative in my gameplay styles when I'm flying cargo. And as we head into Lawville through the rainy clouds with the sun on our left, we're reminded of just how good Star Citizen can look. Fantastic. One of the nice things about landing at Lawville in particular is the spaceport is very easy to spot both in day and night owing to those holograms that say Tisa spaceport all over them marking out the area that you're supposed to be going to. That's not the same for some other planets. For example, the Riker Memorial spaceport at Art Corp, I'm looking at you. However, when you're landing at Lawville, it's very, very quick and easy to find the spaceport, which is great. What is also great is seeing that sun, that reflection, those clouds and the horizon. Because we're landing at a proper designated landing area, we will need to contact air traffic control. That avoids us getting into trouble, but it also means that they'll open the doors for us at one of the landing bays. One of the good things and bad things about the Hercules series is that they do make great use of the space. 
So when you get one of these landing bays from places like Lawville, there's no space wasted. You get all of your cargo in there. The bad thing is it makes for a very tight landing. So you have to be pretty confident with where your ship is, especially because the tail on the Hercules sticks out that little bit more. So sometimes, even if you think you've cleared the landing bay with the cockpit, your tail might strike just on the end. You have to be all the way forward in a landing bay like this. I know that some players will use third party views, third person views when they're landing. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But I like my like my immersion with my Toby eye tracker of trying to do it in first person. So I very gingerly make my way through those hangar bay doors and land the ship. Once again, we're going to go engines off. That just helps the ship to settle and means if I spawn it in again, it hopefully won't be 50 meters up in the air. As we make our way through the hall of doors, we'll head down the ladder, I think, and go out through one of the ramps on the Hercules, just to see all of that nice crated up cargo ready to go. head out the front ramp. There's something very satisfying about seeing the difference in a ship like this between when the cargo bay is empty and when it's full of delicious crates. If you are running cargo and you don't physically see the crates, that's potentially fine as well. Um, with Star Citizen being in the state that it's in, sometimes you don't physically see the crates. That might be something that's fixed in 318, um, but invisible crates are a thing. Um, and so don't don't be worried and thinking, where's my cargo gone? It might still be there. And as we watch some top tier elevator gameplay, we'll head back through TESA spaceport. For those interested, the total profit for this run across both the Laronite and the Titanium was 131,600 Alpha UEC. So a decent, a decent profit for the amount of time that this has been. Although there are more profitable ways to earn that money um, through some of the other contracts in game at the moment. But to be fair, more than half of that profit was from the Laronite. The Titanium doesn't have quite such a profit margin. And so if you also manage to fill up on more of the good stuff, you will see the profits are higher. As we head onto the tram, I have said I will speed up this footage somewhat, so don't be surprised if the tram is moving much quicker than you see it move in game. Interestingly, in the earlier days of hauling cargo, it was much more profitable than it was currently to do so. So it might be that as the developers encourage more cargo running gameplay with either new ships coming online or the refactor work coming online. It might be that some of those profit margins change. That's probably a normal part of development. And as we make our way through the gold and marble of Hurston Dynamics, it does make you wonder why am I selling my goods to these people? The answer, because they've got money. And as we move to the trade console to sell the final goods, that concludes this cargo hauling run. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, thank you for watching.